All right, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. All right, God bless you. Hello, everybody. Good to see you, and uh, it's good to uh, be in the Word of God and uh, to keep growing in Him and staying strong in the Lord, the power of His might, uh, by the Holy Spirit, and uh, continue to walk in faith, uh, belief in God, and His plan that He did through Jesus Christ. God is the one who brings it all down to an even level. And He does it right from the beginning. I mean, think about it. Adam and Eve, they were not Jewish. Abraham was not Jewish. Uh, But Abraham had a promise that was coming. And so we know how Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the 12 sons, one of them was Judah, and then we got David. And so the seed was going to be coming through this line, the seed that's Jesus, the Messiah. All right, let's get into chapter 1. We're going to do 1 through 3. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. So isn't that great? He promised this before, and the prophets confirm it. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now Muslims, they say God has no son. Well, see, they came 630 years after Christ. They wouldn't know God has a son because they don't go back to the scripture of David. Now, they they know King David. They know the prophets. So what you'd have to do if you're Muslim, go look at what was written 1,000 years before Jesus uh, by King David in Psalm 2. The son and the king, he's the one who inherits the whole world. So that's made of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. See, Jesus Christ paid for our sins, died with it. They were wiped out. He never sinned. He's risen up to God, to the right hand of God, so that where he is, we can be also. By whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name yep they're being obedient to that faith in him uh, and among all nations for his name's sake yeah he's wanting his name put out there praise god well it's all his right among whom are ye also called of jesus christ see you're called uh and if you haven't been called well you've been called answer the call repent and turn to him Uh, and uh, be baptized. That means uh, be immersed in water and risen up in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Be baptized with the Holy Spirit, get new life, and start following Jesus. All right. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. See, saints. Now, that's where, like with the Catholic, um, they pray to saints. Well, we don't pray to saints. You in Christ are a saint. Um, yeah, you're set apart. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. Wow, so throughout the known world that they were in, uh, their faith was strong and it was being spoken about. For God is my witness. Now, isn't that something? Is your faith in God spoken about? You know, that's a good one to think about. Or do people not even know that you are of faith in God? All right, for God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, the good news of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making a request if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come to you. So he's wanting to come to Rome. For I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end ye may be established. Yeah, praise God. So, yeah, he really wanted to go there and impart a spiritual gift on him, on them. And uh, see, it says that we're supposed to pray for the gifts. Um, so you got different gifts that God gives, even that gift of healing. Uh, praise God that we can just follow God and be by the power of his Holy Spirit. And uh, there's giftings that come within the whole body. Now, the whole body of Christ is worldwide. See, the greatest uh, family that is more diverse than anything in the whole world is the family in Jesus Christ. Yeah, praise God. Isn't that great? See, we all are all brothers and sisters in Him. Twelve. That is, that I may 
be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was let hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. Yeah, well, see, this that's in Christ is fruitful, springing forth with new life, uh, yeah, and multiplying, yeah, multiplying with new believers. See, every soul matters to God. Well, He's calling out to every soul. Um, now, does God matter to you? That's the thing. He loves you, but do you love God? Can you turn from the other things of this world to turn to Him who loves you? I'm a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and the unwise. So as much as in, is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you there at Rome also. Yeah, praise God. He's wanting to share the gospel with them even more. And Paul, man, he has a lot of um, revelation uh, along with the other apostles. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Praise God. I pray you are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ and that you uh, continue to grow in it. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. See, this is to everybody. And it's the power power of God to salvation, to saving of souls. Praise God. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. And see, we see the line, how it was coming, that seed through the Jews. Jesus, of course, was Jewish. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. That is, it is written, the just shall live by faith. 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who holds or suppresses the truth in unrighteousness. So what's the wrath of God against? The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. So there's men that know, but they want to suppress the truth. Wow. Well, the wrath of God is coming against them. Because that which may be known of God is made known in them, for God has showed it to them. See, God showed it to, to all men. For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Wow, so we can look out in this world and clearly see. Being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Yep, nobody's got an excuse, right? Because that, when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became empty in their imaginations. And their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like a to corruptible man. So they were making their own images that looked like man and to birds, to four-footed beasts, creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts. So that lust of their own hearts are fashioning their own little gods to dishonor their own bodies. See, that lust of their hearts dishonors their own body. You can have this vessel to honor or dishonor. So they dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. See, we're supposed to, we are made in the image of God to worship the Creator. Yeah, we see buildings back here. We know that uh, they have a Creator, right? You see trees. We have a Creator. Yeah, you, you're not going to throw all the parts of a building and shake them up for how many years? 10,000 years and end up with a building? No. People made buildings. People make things. And God made the world and his creation, man in his image. For this cause God gave them up to vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was due. It says meat, but that means do. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate or debased mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness. See, 
when people want to have what is somebody else's, to take what somebody else's has. And actually, you see a lot of this um, even with governments. You got people pushing stuff that, hey, we're going to go steal what you have, and then we're going to take it, and we're going to spread it out wherever we want, instead of letting each person work and uh, have what they work for. And, you know, people can bless other people with what they have. Um, and help help others out. All right, so covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. Wow, isn't that something, disobedient to parents? Imagine how many people have been out destroying buildings when some of them had even good parents. But some of the kids are just really being disobedient to their own parents. Without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Uh, implacable, I think that's uh, unforgiving. Unmerciful. 32, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So see, people that have pleasure in the sin and sin and continue to do it, sin hurts people. And sin takes away from others, and sin is not love. Paul is laying down the groundwork for all men as being caught up in this. Now let's go to chapter 2. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest. So now he's talking about those who are going to judge or setting themselves up as judges. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest dost the same things. So he's saying, you who are judging, and see what he's doing here is specifically looking at Jews. So we have Jews and Gentiles, but the Jews were really set up with the oracles of God to be speaking what was right by God. So they're, the Jews are setting themselves up as judges, which G Paul was a Jewish Pharisee. But he left that as dung to turn to Jesus Christ. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? So he's saying, look, you being a judge, you still do the same things that the Gentiles and the rest of the world do. Uh, but you're not going to escape the judgment of God. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. So Paul's showing how good God is, that he is patient and long suffering. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasures up thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. All right, so usually you just hear that first part. It's the goodness of God that leads man to repentance, but people don't talk about the wrath and the judgment. Well, let's be balanced and just look at what the Bible says. Verse 6, Who will render to every man according to his deeds? So God's going to render to every man according to his deeds. To them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality and eternal life. See, praise God, isn't that something? Uh them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory, honor, and immortality, eternal life. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. See, that's what they're getting. Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. So Paul's laying this groundwork, Jews and Gentiles, where are they at? Both in the same boat. For there is no respect of persons with God. For as many as have sinned without the law shall also perish without the law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just by God, but the doers. So he's showing here that a lot of these judges, the Jewish judges, yeah, they can say the law, but can they do it? Do they do it? No, <laughs> they don't. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these, having not the law, are a law unto themselves. So look at that conscience that they have, the conscience and the heart, soft and supple towards the things of God, or is it seared? 
You don't have a seared conscience? Well, if you have a seared conscience, pray to God. Pray to God. If you have a hardness in your heart, pray to Jesus. Pray to God in the name of Jesus and He will help you. He will dissipate that and it'll break up. He'll help you. Praise God. Which shows the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the mean while accusing or else excusing one another. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. So how's he going to judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ? And that's the gospel that, that Paul's preaching. Verse 17, Behold, thou art called a Jew, and resteth in the law, and makest thy boast of God, and knowest his will, and approve the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law. And art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light to them which are in darkness. So they're setting themselves up as a light to them. Well, Jesus Christ is a light that came into the darkness, and they understood him not. So you've got to have eyes to see and ears to hear, don't you? An instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which hast the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Remember when they brought the harlot before Jesus? Uh, yeah, Jesus wrote in the, the sand, and they all left one by one. And uh, it said, those who forsake the Lord will be written in the dust. Uh, but I don't know, some of those guys were probably adulterers themselves. And really, Jesus showed that they were the real adulterer, where the harlot that, that they drug before Jesus, she turned to Jesus as Lord. Jesus set her free and said, go sin no more. She's not the real harlot, but these teachers of the law, trying to hold their own power over men, Jesus showed that they weren't following God, they're following their father, the devil. All right, verse 23. Thou that makest thy boast of the law, through breaking the law, dishonorest thou God? Oh, that's a question, actually. I should have said that like a question. For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you. So, yeah, they were being hypocrites, and it was blaspheming the name of God. The name of God. See, when a wife takes on a name and everybody that turns to Jesus is looked at as a bride, a woman, a bride to a husband, a faithful bride that has his name. So a wife has the name of her husband and, um, you know, she should do good with that. Uh, and all of us that are a bride of Christ, we should do good with that so we're not walking as hypocrites. For circumcision verily profiteth if thou keep the law. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. You had to be circumcised as a Jew. So they were putting things in the rituals, which were only a shadow of what it was shown about. But even in the Old Testament, it says you need to have circumcised hearts. That's what it was all about. Not following the flesh, but following the Spirit of God. All right. Therefore, if the uncircumcision, and that would be the Gentiles, keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision, and shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision does transgress the law. So a person that was not a Jew, if they were doing what was right in their heart, what was right by God, see, they could judge the one that was circumcised and set up by the law. Isn't that great? So Paul is really showing that there's an even line here. For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. See, praise God that God has this, that it's really about the heart. That's what God was looking for, and that's why Jesus brought in... See, the world brings in... They want to bring in a new world order. They have been talking about a new world order for a long time, and they're pushing one right now, of course. But the new order that God brought in was a new covenant by Jesus Christ by faith. Just like in the beginning, Abraham was by faith. He was no Jew. He was one man out of the world that would be coming from him, a people 
They ended up becoming known as the Jews from the tribe of Judah. And from that tribe was King David. And from that king was coming the seed that was promised. He would have a kingdom forever. That kingdom is the kingdom that Jesus Christ brought in. That is the new order so that you can be saved by faith in him and not have to go back into things written on stone, but written on the heart. Amen. To be set free. What advantage then hath the Jew, or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. So see, he's showing, like, to the Jews, what, was there no advantage to that? No, there is. There is, because look, they had the oracles. All of this Old Testament, that's all Jewish. The last book, 400 years before Jesus, Malachi. They, the Jews already collected those books, so that's why we go by those books. So much every way, chiefly because that unto them were the, committed the oracles of God. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? So yeah, of course there were Jews that did not believe. That doesn't make God wrong. God was right. He put forth before people, that, but not everybody chose it. Remember, Jesus said to the Jewish Pharisees that were total hypocrites, you're not following God. You follow your father, the devil. All right. They don't even hear God and they don't even believe Moses. That's what he was saying. You go by your own traditions. You don't follow Moses. And look today, we have the Talmud. Well, one of the biggest uh, people that they look up to in the Talmud is Rambon, Maimonides, I think around 11 or 1200 in uh, Spain. And he's the one who came up with the Noahide laws that they're saying everybody should go under and that if you are uh, an uh, idolater, you should be beheaded. So all these are traditions of men. They've got 613 laws in, in the Jewish way, plus the other seven Noahide laws. And so people are under all kinds of things that are tradition of man. But Actually, Jesus was saying, yeah, you don't even believe Moses. You go by your traditions, which nullify the power of God. God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it's written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. God forbid. For then how shall God judge the world? For if the truth of God hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? And not rather, as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say. See, they're being, Paul and the Christians are being slandered against. So people are slandering them, accusing of th them of things that are not true affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just. No, see, Paul's not saying that they, sh that they are free to do evil. No, that's not what it's about. What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise, for we have before proven that both Jews and Gentiles, that they are all under sin. So there's showing that everybody is under sin both Jews and Gentiles, there isn't some special way to get out of sin other than what God has set. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. And thinking about unprofitable, remember with Jeremiah, where God had him go bury a a uh, belt, a sash, go bury it in the mud and then dig it up. Well, he went back to dig it up. Anyway, when he went and dug that sash up, it was rotten, good for nothing, unprofitable. So God was saying that, look, you guys are unprofitable, good for nothing. And they were going to get destroyed. And then God is speaking of the way that they should go that's fruitful. Verse 13, their throat is an open sepulcher or tomb. With their tongues they have used deceit. The, po the poison of asp is under their lips, whose wor mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know 
that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. See that, so that's what the law's showing. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Great, isn't that super? But now the unrighteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. So, what, what is witnessing this? Okay, let's read that one more time. But now the righteousness of God without the law. So Jesus Christ had come in. And so we, this new order that he brought in is a new covenant that is written on the hearts, not on stone. All right. So it's made known, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. All right. That's what they were speaking of. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So the grace of God is what brought this free gift freely by His grace, justified just as if they never sinned through the redemption. So He redeemed us. That is through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So redemption is in Christ Jesus. In the seed, that's where we should be. Verse 25, Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood. See, they, before they had the blood of bulls and goats that they would shed, where the priest would put his hand on it, and it's like the sin transferring into there. Well, it's a shadow of what was to come, but not the real thing. The real thing was when Jesus would come to pay sin for everybody. All right. Declared, okay, so through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believe in Jesus. So you have a justifier, just as if you never sinned. It's through Jesus Christ, and you believe in on Him. Where is boasting then? It's excluded. By what law? Of works? No, but by the law of faith. See, we have a new royal law, this law of faith. Therefore, we continue that a man is justified by faith, without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. See, man, God made a great family right from the beginning, and that's his plan that he had from the beginning. Verse 30, Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith, that's the Jews, and the uncircumcision, that's the rest of the world, through faith. Do we then make void or empty the law through faith? God forget, forbid. Yea, we establish the law. So we got this law of faith, praise God. Isn't that super? That you can turn to Jesus. God has made such an even playing field. Can you imagine this? Uh, who is actually going to make things even? Can you rely on a president of a nation to do that? Can you rely on any head of nation wherever you are in the world? No, but we can rely on God Almighty who makes everything an even playing ground so we can all come to Him. And He made it so good that we know, even by creation, that there is a God and that we can turn to Him. So, praise God. Continue to follow Him faithfully uh, because He will come, the last trump. Uh, we rise up in the air with Him. He judges. And uh, now you are saved by faith in Him uh, and then judged according to our works. He gives us good works to do, so He's given you good works and me good works. We'll continue to do it. We're not ashamed of the gospel. Uh, but we continue to praise Him, and so that when we see Him, He's going to say, Well done, good and faithful servant. Amen.